also to extend that thing so like it all will happen we're learning about david smith an autobiography of david smith remember he's afraid if he doesn't write it soon it won't get written so it's because he's afraid <laughs> here is the big acacia tree over in front of his house and there's a well, that's where he grew up. In my earliest memories, he went to kindergarten at New London, New Haven, Ohio. First, the towns in Ohio are come from Connecticut Firelands, and they call the towns Greenwich, Norwalk, North Fairfield, New London, the Greenfield. Hmm. Here he is. He's. He is in kindergarten in New Haven. Hmm. Hmm. This town where he lived was called originally Chicago, Ohio. But the people were traveling on the railroad going to Chicago itself, Illinois, and they see the sign in Chicago, they get off the train and they say, what the heck, I'm in Ohio. So the president of the v Railroad changes, the, his name is Daniel Willard, he changes the name of the town to Willard. Mm -hmm. My father was a seed dealer. and One day he had all the sprays, uh, he had these poisons to kill insects. So one day he gets a call from the railroad. The town train was sitting in Willard with cars full of grain infested with insects. He went with my brothers to climb the rail cars, opening the hatch, dumping in strong toxin inside each car. Apparently it was a pretty dangerous move as breathing. Too much of the poison could kill you in those yeah, days. That's how he got cancer. Apparently, in those days, farmers were using all kinds of unknown, untested, unregulated pesticides. Apparently, much more dangerous in the early years than later on. But he came home with $10,000 in his pocket for the job. Not bad for one day's work. That's way back in the 60s, dear. Mm -hmm. Then the train could continue on. The story is unconfirmed, but you can check the story with Dale, my brother. I wasn't there for this thing. I was probably too young. Here I am buried up in the sand. and This is Larry Shrek, Dale, my brother. Frank Shrek, that's my sister Alice, and that's Julie Shrek. And that's me. I was been buried under the sand ever since. <laughs> like, why does it say Rosemary? Oh. Here he played, used to play with my my cousins, Rosemary, Becky, Chili, Stevie. And we had a pond and we used to climb the blueberry tree. <laughs> Here I am with my teddy bear. <laughs> I remember in second grade, I watched TV and the events around, I saw J JFK's assassination news. In third grade, I had like 80 links on my uh, my bookworm and, and was second be placed behind Larry Helm in reading volume. Hmm. That's cool. Hmm. Hmm. I, in fourth grade, I began piano lessons with Wayne Stahl in Willard, Ohio. Mm -hmm. What happened is that my Uncle Bobby's, Earl, Robert Earl of Fitchville's graduation, there was a piano player. I, I think he was playing ragtimes, which I, when it, which I, as a small child, became fascinated with. I remember stood by the piano with my eyes at about the level of the keyboard, silently watching. His name was Ken Labbery and was from New London, Ohio, the same town as my birthplace. 
That night, I asked my mother if I could take piano lessons. Later, when I recorded the complete show, Scott Joplin Ragtimes, I mentioned Ken Lavery in my recording. Ken Lavery, Ken E. Rock Lavery, age 81, of New London, died October, August 12, 2007. He was born November 24, 1925, in New London. Okay. He was a graduate, a 1943 graduate of New London High School. You know, I don't know if he's like a classmate of my mom or some sort of thing. He was a teacher over 40 years. He taught at New London High School. He served in the Army during World War II. He was a member of the Legion. <clears throat> he was a talented musician. Hmm. He played, I think, was Scott Joplin Ragtimes. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I could remember that, but that's my guess. Mm -hmm. hmm. That's how I started playing piano, dear. You see somebody playing and you say, I'd like to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I worked on the farm and had chores. I remember carrying two of those five gallon buckets of feed to the cattle in the back barn, which later burned down. In the winter, I had, I had to climb in to dump it. I used to, can you imagine two two buckets of five gallons each. This is why farm boys are strong. I used to tie an ear of corn to a string of twine. I used to fish for hogs. <laughs> you know, you take an ear of corn there, you tie a piece of string to it. You lower it down into the hog pen and then the hogs come to bite it and you pull it away. You tease the pigs. <laughs> I used to shoot birds with my BB gun. Huh? Did you talk like a hillbilly? <laughs> Did you talk like a hillbilly at this time? I believe I rarely hit them. Must be that I, I BB gun is not <clears throat> terribly accurate. Once Susie, our big 2,000-pound cow, stepped on my foot, but it seems no damage was done. We used to play in the haymow once Rich Dale, Larry, and Frank had my me hold on to the rope with the pulley. I would, gra I would grab one end, and they would, they would take the other end and jump down from the hay. They sent me flying up to the roof where I hit my mouth. For some reason, I did not let go. I guess I was, once you get way up to the top, I just somehow, there was no solution there. I get higher and higher. Subsequently, they called me Parrot because I had swollen lips because I hit myself on the roof when they jumped down and pulled me up. I used to play hockey on the pond and I would fall over and over again on the same spot on my chin, creating permanent scars. So now I have a scar on my chin from playing hockey. Hmm. Hmm. There's the tractor. Did you drive that tractor? Yeah. Hmm. My mind would wander and dream for long hours driving tractor I liked cultivating. I spent many hours in the summer on the 450 farm all tractor. I used to bush hog, uh -huh. big mower cutting down weeds in the field. Uh -huh. There used to be huge clouds of dust and pollen. I learned later on that farm children had a much lower in, in, uh, incident of having allergies because their exposure at a young age. So I was never allergic to anything. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. There's Alice. That's, that's Rich Dale. 
me, Anna, and Alice. <laughs> See, I used to wear these, like, uh, I love this shirt. It was like a striped, you know how I like the striped shirt going across. Now I'm returning to wearing those. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I'll have to stop here. <laughs> that was very interesting. Thanks for sharing it. All right. Uh -huh. I'm stopping on, this is like uh, for the early childhood. <laughs>